official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Bill Doolin, the bank and train robber who terrorized the Southwest in the 1890s, led the most ruthless and efficient gang in outlaw history. Cimarron, Kansas, July the 28th, 1893. You haven't been with us as long as so you stay here and hold the horse and keep us covered. All right, Bill. Red, you and Joe follow me and cover me from that side. Come on, Blackjack. outlaw was identified as Ed Brinkley, a new recruit to the Doolin gang. Since the railroad was involved, I was sent to Cimarron on the double. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Can't touch you now, Brinkley. Why won't you talk? Haven't you a family? Any friends? I, I got a wife. If you'll tell me where I can find Doolin, I give you my word of honor that your wife will get part of the reward. I'm, I'm gonna die, is that it? You're putting up a good fight. Doc here says he's doing everything he can for you. You you want to level about, about sharing the reward? That's right. She's in Columbus, Ohio. This is Ed Brinkley. It's, it's my real name. Now, what about Doolin? He's headed for Oklahoma. A cave about 40 miles north of Guthrie. I've never been there, but I, I heard him talk about it. Can't you tell me anything else? No, I, I was kind of new. Tell Sarah I love her and I, I'm sorry. <coughs> Brinkley hadn't given me much to work on, but I sent a telegram to Deputy Marshal Gleason in Guthrie, Oklahoma, and left on the next train. I also arranged for Frankie Adams, another operator for the railroad, to meet me there. Yes, there are caves in that area. If I sent out enough men to handle the Doolin gang, they'd be spotted before they get anywhere near them. Doolin can't keep his men cooped up in a cave. They want to hit town, start blowing their money. I've checked every town on Crossroad within a radius of 50 miles. Anybody has seen them, they're too scared to tell us. Frankie and I have got a scheme that might be the answer. What is it? We didn't notify the newspapers that Brinkley had been identified. If his wife comes into town looking for him, she might contact some member of the gang. Hmm. Mrs. Brinkley willing to cooperate? Well, I don't know about that, but uh, Frankie is. I've been everything from a school teacher to a circus performer. Being Mrs. Ed Brinkley should be a cinch. Suppose one of the gang knows Brinkley's wife. Well, he hasn't been of the gang very long, and besides, she comes from Columbus, Ohio. Oh. Hmm. Oh, maybe you might turn up something with that. Fine. Frankie, we got to fake some identification paper for you to prove you're from Columbus. Let's go. Now, wait a minute. You know, Doolin has plenty of men. He got them trained like an army. If you do get a line on him, don't try anything on your own. We understand, Marshal. Then good luck to you. In the next weeks, Frankie, posing as Ed Brinkley's wife, went from town to town seeking information about her missing husband. In the larger towns, I followed Frankie so I could keep an eye on her. In the smaller towns where a stranger would attract attention, I didn't contact her until after she made her inquiries. Then came the day Frankie arrived in Ingalls, an isolated off-the-pass settlement on the edge of Indian territory.
What can I do for you, ma'am? Oh, are you the manager? Yeah. Do you have a room? I might have. How long are you planning to stay? I don't know. I'm looking for my husband. Your husband? His name's Brinkley. Ed Brinkley. What makes you think he's around here? I was supposed to meet him in Guthrie, but he never showed up. So you're looking for him. Sign this. Brink's wife's over at the hotel asking for him. Asking for him? Yeah. I wrote and told her he was dead. Maybe she didn't get the letter. If she didn't, how'd she know to come here? Brink didn't know about this place. She said he was going to meet her in Guthrie. When he didn't show, she set out to hunt for him. By herself? Yeah. Uh, there's something fishy about this. He's in that letter, and I only told her he was dead, but if she came here right away, I'd give her Brinkley's share of the holdup money. Yeah. Doolin. <laughs> She's quite a gal. Yeah. Who is it? Got your suitcase, miss. Put it on the bed. He was right. You're quite a gal. You're awfully fresh. Get out of here. <laughs> sure. I uh, hear you're looking for Ed Brinkley. Wait a minute. That's right. He's my husband. Can you prove that? Well, I don't carry around a wedding certificate, but I... Is Ed in trouble again? First, I gotta know who you are. I'm Sarah Brinkley. Well, if you don't believe me, I've got papers and letters for Let's Ed. Let's see the letters. Just the postmarks. Southwest City, Missouri, May 16th. You ought to know for checks. Ed's wife is from Columbus. You from Columbus? Yes. This coat looks store-bought. Has it got a label? I think so. Peabody Emporium, Columbus, Ohio. When did you leave home? On the 18th. Ah. And that's why you didn't get my letter. What letter? Maybe you'd better sit down. Your husband's dead, Mrs. Brinkley. It was an accident. Shoulder to cry on? Who's crying? <laughs> sure. What's done is done. Tears won't bring it back. You're young, good looking. You won't have any trouble hooking up with a man. And as long as you're here, I'm going to give you your husband's share of the last job. And you must be Bill Dillon. That's right. You can have a lot of fun with that money. If you don't mind, I, I don't want to talk about it right now. I'm... Sure. I'll come back later. Maybe we can have some dinner or something. By the way, it's a pretty rough town. Me and the boys took over. Make sure you won't be disturbed or leave a man downstairs. That won't be necessary. <laughs> you don't know this place. I don't want nobody bothering you. Except maybe me.
Yeah, what is it? Dillon was just here. He and his men own the town. How many men does he have? I don't know, but you better get Marshal Gleason right away. Leave you here? Don't worry. They'd be suspicious if I left. Besides, Dillon's got one of his men downstairs to guard me. All right, but stay in your room. I'll be back at 10 o'clock tomorrow with Gleason and the posse. Better clear out of here, Matt, before somebody sees you. I'll see you at 10 tomorrow. Any of you gents know where I can find a man named Doolin? What do you want with him? He wrote me a letter. Told me to come to this joint and ask for him. Who are you? Sarah Brinkley. Well, what's wrong with that? You got a letter, let's see it. Just a minute. I don't know whether I want to give you the letter. I said give it to me. Well, sure. You don't have to get sore. It's my letter, all right. Go get that other dame. Come on, Sarah, I'll buy you a drink. What about the money in the letter? Later. to see you. I'm sorry, I can't see him right now. Either you come out or I break this door down. Just a minute. What's wrong? The boss wants to ask you some questions. Seems there's more than one Mrs. Brinkley. Come on. Get your hands up. This settles which one is the real Mrs. Brinkley. Yeah, it's a tough breaker showing up right now, but I think everything's gonna work out all right. Get over there. Sit down. We got a little waiting to do. morning, Marshal Gleese and I and a well-organized posse were on our way to Ingalls. To avoid arousing suspicion, we were concealed in the wagon. The driver looked like any settler heading for the Cherokee outlet. We wanted to get to town and put our men in position before the fireworks started. All right, get up. Over over there. Go on through town, turn off that first side street. You take half of the men and drop off there. I'll take the rest and hit the saloon. Wonder what's keeping red. You stick around. It's over to stay with you. I come with us. Well? Let's go.
get? There's about five thousand dollars there. Well, you expect your husband only worked two jobs. <laughs> like sitting ducks on a pond. The Battle of Ingalls took place September the 1st, 1893. Four deputy marshals killed, three wounded, one member of the Doolin gang captured. It was a mighty one-sided score. Now we better separate. What about our money? Well, you split it now if you like. Two. Empty. What? I mean it's empty. That double-crossing little trap. What do you mean? Brinkley's wife. She must have cleaned this while I was getting you. Wait till I get my hands on her. The Mingles is only two places she can go. You and Blackjack cover Guthrie. First of us will go to Stillwater. <laughs> searched her. Here, you can have this back. Take a look at these, Matt. Did you get any information from the prisoner? No. I hope you'll be a little more cooperative. I don't know anything to be cooperative about. You got no right to hold me. You were with Doolin when the fight started, and you tried to escape with him. They made me go to the stable. Hmm, didn't look that way to me. According to these letters, you're Ed Brinkley's widow. That ain't no crime. Look, I've answered all your questions. Either you gotta make some kind of charge against me or you gotta let me go. She's right. I've checked on her. She got in town just a few minutes before the shooting. Well, under the circumstances, I guess I can't hold you. All right, let me get out of here. Be back in a minute. Hey, Matt. I followed that Brinkley dame. She was leaving town all right. But first she went to the stable and picked up more money than you could count. Has she got much of a start on us? No. to uh, Eureka Springs. If you want to go further east, you... Just give me a ticket to Eureka Springs. Yes, ma'am. That'll be $2.10. There you are. Oh, I'm afraid I can't change that big a bill. Well, lady, you forgot your change. Does that train stop anywhere before it gets to Eureka Springs? Uh, no. Uh, if you want to go to Arbuckle, you should... Thanks. When we 
we lost Sarah Brinkley's tracks in Engle, the search led us to the closest town of Guthrie. Well, yes, sir. What can I do for you? The gal wearing a dark skirt and gray jacket leave on that train. She'd be carrying a parcel. Yes, sir. She bought her ticket at the last minute. Was she alone? Well, as far as I could tell. The train don't go any further than Eureka Springs. Come on. We got some hard riding ahead of us. Much obliged. keeping it safe for you. I was going to give it back. Honest, I was. You believe that? No. Neither do I. It's the truth. With all those lawmen around, I figured you might get caught. You mean you hope I get caught? No. Here's the money. I only spent part of my share for clothes. Come on. You're not going to take all of it. What do you think? Well, Bill. What about my share? You know, you promised me that you'd give me some. You don't have any share. Then why don't Shut up! I tried to give you a break once. But you're a lying, thieving, double-crossing, money-hungry little tramp. I guess you're lucky at that. If you're a man, I'd kill you. Oh! We've been waiting for you. Now turn around. Drop those guns and get your hands up. Relax, Mrs. Brinkley. You're not going anywhere. Money recovered and Doolin under arrest, I figured that was the end of Bill Doolin. But I was wrong. On the night of July the 5th, 1896, Bill Doolin escaped from the federal prison at Guthrie. I was among a posse led by U.S. Deputy Marshal Heck Thomas that had trailed him into a small, unlighted cabin in the hills. Bill Doolin was finished. His body riddled with 23 buckshot. It was the end of the Doolin gang. <laughs> 